A graduate of the Virginia Military Institute, our next speaker retired from the Army in 2009 and was sworn in as Deputy Secretary of the American Battle of Monuments Commission in 2014. The a ABMC administers our nation's overseas commemorative cemeteries and federal memorials. Our guest previously served as, the, as Executive Director and Chief of Military History at the U.S. Army Center of Military History in 2011. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Robert D'Alessandro. What an honor it is to be here to speak with you today. And I'm not going to talk to you about the American Battle Monuments Commission, which, of course, is my primary duty. And we have the honor to maintain and operate all our overseas cemeteries and memorials. And if you haven't seen any of those at Normandy or other, other of our sites, the Punch Bowl out west, please take some time and visit those. We pay tribute there to the service of all of the branches, and every day it's a privilege to wake up and do that. Before I begin, and I'm going to talk to you this morning a little bit about the World War I centennial, which is a good warm-up for the American Legion centennial, I want to do two things. I want to give a shout out to my post, Post 24 Alexandria, Virginia. I don't know if anybody's here from that post, but thanks for being out here. And to our American Legion rep, Jim, would you stand up for a second? Jim Whitfield is the American Legion rep to the U.S. World War I Centennial Commission. Thanks, Jim. So this morning, on behalf of the World War I Centennial Commission, I'd like to thank you for your time today, for the opportunity to share my thoughts, and for your efforts on behalf of the Centennial Commission in the future. The World War I Centennial Commission has two missions, education, and commemoration. Education because too many Americans, particularly our younger Americans, have little knowledge or understanding of the Great War and its continuing relevance to the 21st century. We still live under the long shadow of World War I in so, so many ways. At the beginning of the war, the United States was an agrarian debtor nation and it was inward looking, a minor power on the world stage. Our army, smaller than that of Romania. By war's end, the United States was a creditor nation, an industrial nation, and its world was leading the rest of the world in economic and military power. In the spirit of a then popular song, how you gonna keep them down on the farm after they've seen Paris, Americans now saw themselves as active participants for the good in world affairs, for the good. The service in our armed forces of African Americans, of immigrants, of women working in the military, and the women in working in industry at home and providing humanitarian service overseas served as a kindling that sparked the civil rights movement. Here's an interesting fact. Of four adult males of service age in tribal nations, one of them wore the uniform in World War I. One in four. That's a stunning statistic, and people need to hear stories like that. At the commission, we need the American Legion to serve as our active partners, to help us tell these stories. Our country and the world need to hear about the service of over 4.7 million Americans in this war. Today's young people should hear about the 198,000 Texans who served in World War I, the 400,000 New Yorkers, the 324,000 Pennsylvanians, the 200,000 Ohioans. Every state and territory overwhelmingly answered the call to serve. Let me be clear. We need you everyone out there on the floor, the, American, the membership of the American Legion, and we need the social media impact that it brings, we need the prestige that the American Legion brings to tell these stories, loudly and proudly. Because it's 
vitally important that we understand how this war shaped our nation and the world we live in today. And yet, so few Americans do. At the World War I Centennial Commission, we aim to fix that. We have an ambitious multi-year program that covers educating the American public, and as I've mentioned, in particular, American youth, about these triumphs and these tragedies of this world-changing event. In partnership with the History Channel, the National World War I Museum in Kansas City, and the Pritzker Military Museum and Library in Chicago, we've outlined a comprehensive educational plan that will reach more than 10 million middle and high school students, and there'll be broader programs that will be available to the public at large. Our second thank you, and I'll tell you, we have reached already 250,000 teachers, teachers, to teach them the importance of service that everybody on this floor knows right now. Our second mission is commemoration, to remember and honor a forgotten generation who not only served heroically in this war and helped to win it, but who then came home and became the mothers and fathers of the greatest generation. Congress authorized the Centennial Commission to establish a National World War I Memorial on Pennsylvania Avenue in Washington, D.C. This memorial will figuratively stand side by side with the National World War I Museum in Kansas City and literally with the memorials on the National Mall to the three other great wars of the 20th century. And like so many of the recent memorials that pay tribute to our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marine and Coast Guardsmen, we receive no public funds in our authorization. So this memorial project and all the Commission's work is possible only through private donations and the support of groups like the Legion. So we need you. We need your help now because things are moving quickly. The design competition for the National World War I Memorial was announced earlier this year, and over 350 submissions came in from all over the world. Just weeks ago, the five finalists in the National World War I Memorial Design Competition were announced. The five draft designs were here at this convention earlier this week, and I hope some of you took time to drop by and review them and share feedback with us. You can also visit World War I, and that's the number one, cc.org, to view these fascinating design concepts and share your thoughts with us. Once completed, this memorial will be the largest gesture of appreciation to American servicemen and women in a generation, and each of you can be part of this process. And don't think this is just a Washington, D.C. operation. We have state chapters starting all over the country, and you can find those by visiting worldwar1cc.org and connect with these groups already active in your own state. The cost of World War I was high. More than 116,000 Americans died during the war. More than in Korea and Vietnam War combined. Given the length of our involvement, it was a terrible and bloody war. But there's a higher cost if we do not pay tribute to this generation of veterans. How can we turn to young people who are today thinking of joining the military and be honest in telling them that their service will be remembered in the future? We need to enlist you. We need you to sign up and show up and make sure that service of five million Americans receives the honor, respect, attention, and dignity it deserves. If we come together and coordinate a sustained national tribute to those who served in World War I, then we can turn to those young people thinking of enlisting, and we can be honest in telling them that their service mattered and that it will always be remembered. On the thank you, thank you so much. On the eve of this centennial, we must embrace this moment to recognize World War I and the World War I generation. We today, all of us, can build their legacy and install them in a place of honor alongside those millions who served in the 20th century's other great conflicts. It is our task to ensure that this generation is not forgotten. It is our mission to provide a voice to these Americans who can no longer speak. 
and by doing so, we send a powerful message to veterans of later wars who are still now with us that 50 or 75 or 100 years from now, they too will never be forgotten. On behalf of the World War I Centennial Commission, I thank you for your attendance here today. I thank each of you for your service, and I hope you will get involved and help us pay tribute to the 4.7 million Americans who wore the uniform in World War I. Thank you.